All we see is the train wrecks. All we see is the people shooting up crystal meth on the street, and that's the entertainment of it. But what they don't see are those people that walk up the stairs wrecked. They walked up, a, up the stairs just a shell, and a short period later, they have their family back in their lives. There's so much hope for everyone. This is Recovery Now. It got to, um, I lost my apartment, so I became homeless. I want to be honest. I was raised to be honest, and you know, the way that I am now is, you know, is not honest, and I gotta, get, I gotta get honest with myself, you know, and with everybody around me. When I disappeared for 10 days, um, sorry, I'm a little emotional, because hearing your dad say that I missed out on so many things, it, it just gets to me. This is Recovery Now. I am very excited to be here. It's been an amazing experience. The reason it's been so amazing is because people in the audience are in recovery. The audience has become a major part of Recovery Now. The purpose of Recovery Now is to bring hope to people who are suffering with addiction or for families who have a loved one who's suffering with addiction. So Recovery Now is pretty amazing because it, it involves the crowd here and you'll understand why if it's your first time here you're going to get really involved. But you're going to help us try to convince some people to get help if they want it. So it should be a good show. We have lots of guests, and uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> David, thanks for coming. Thank you, Mike. And uh, how much sobriety do you have at this point? In two days, I have one year of sobriety. Very cool. <laughs> And I, you know, I talk about the time, you know, the amount of days that you have or the amount of months you have. And it, it, even though that's not as important, I think for people that are struggling, they need to hear that amount of time, that it's a possibility that you can actually do it. What's your life like today? Today, I, am, I have a big uh, support system. My family is back in my life, and that is huge for me. Uh, before I got sober, I was very, very isolated, uh, very alone. Uh, hopeless and um, today I am building relationships and I have hope so it's huge. What is your drug of choice? Methamphetamine okay. and, and marijuana. And you know how bad did it get? I uh, was a daily user I um, was uh, an IV drug user I was slamming crystal meth um, I lost my job, I, I, it got to, um, I lost my apartment so I became homeless um, and I was just in uh, horrible despair. Homeless, jobless, no hope. How were you getting the drugs? Uh, I was getting it as any way I could. You know, we, we, I think all of us that, that we've been in recovery, we're around recovery, we're around uh, support systems. We might take for granted, you know, that uh, you get your family back, you get your life, when you hear these stories. But for the person that's out there that's never entered into a support system, never entered into a treatment facility, never had an intervention, never went to any 12-step meetings, that's a pretty amazing thing that, you know, you went from being jobless and homeless to saying that the most important thing right now is your family. And that's an amazing accomplishment for you. Being in our family's lives, it's just such an amazing thing because it's that, it's that it, you, don't, it, you don't have to pay for it. It's, <laughs> it's not a material thing. It's what really matters in life. And I think that when we're using, we're just so absent from that. You know, um, in the back I had asked you about what the most amazing thing has happened to you uh, in this last year. And um, you had a great answer. Could you, would you mind? Sure. Uh, just a couple of months ago, my sister uh, got pregnant and she lives locally here in Los Angeles and she's been um, asking me to come to her uh, doctor's appointments with her and she really wants me active in uh, her life and in the baby's life and you know so I'm going through this amazing uh, process with my sister and you know she be, before I got sober um, she wouldn't want me in her home you know it was uh, so I'm looking forward to being an uncle again, and um, that's huge. It's so amazing, just being present for life. Yeah. 
And so what's going on with you now? Do you have, how, how do you reach your hand out and help other people? Well, I am uh, going to a lot of meetings. Um, I, I uh, am volunteering at Frank's house. I went through Frank's house uh, for recovery. And um, right now I'm volunteering one day a week at Frank's house and staying connected that way. Um, I have commitments at meetings. And um, I am you know, just trying to stay connected to 12-step programs and to my sobriety. So you're working. Mm -hmm. You're volunteering. Mm -hmm. you're, you have commitments at meetings. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're in your sister's life to help her with her baby. Could you have done any of those things uh, when no, you were using? When I was using, it was impossible for me to even fix the brake light on my car for months. I mean, <laughs> then you get pulled over. We know how that goes. That's how it happened. <laughs> so you went to Frank's house. And uh, now you had tried other programs before. You know, well, tell me yes. about that experience. Well, uh, Frank's house is my second recovery what was your first recovery center? Spencer Recovery. Okay. And um, I went through Spencer in Florida um, and had a really great experience there. Um, but I went to recovery out of state. And when I came back to Los Angeles, um, I found it difficult to kind of, or I, d I didn't get um, tied into the recovery community at home. I didn't develop a sober support system at home. Um, I was, you know, I'm a little bit of a shy person, so it's not easy for me to go into a meeting by myself. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the first time I, when, I, when I got back here, I just didn't get involved, and I relapsed after about a year and a half. Okay. Um, uh, this, this time when I went through Frank's house, um, I was able to go to meetings locally and um, develop sober friends locally. And that's really been the difference. Also at Frank's House, Frank's House is a recovery home focused on uh, gay and lesbian uh, recovery. So um, I'm gay and um, that's also been very helpful because you know, I've been able to be myself over there and um, I've been able to kind of talk about those issues that are, you know, specific to me. That you might have felt uncomfortable at a different facility. Yeah. I think any facility that uh, you go to, you know, it just depends on how comfortable you are. You know, on a one-on-one -on -one level, at least you can get that, that uh, taken care of. But, but at Frank's, you know, having that opportunity on a group level, I guess, and not being fearful of, you know, being judged in any way, that's important. Mm -hmm. Letting your guard down and trusting the people around you so yeah. that you can get honest with yourself. That's right. And one year, almost one year, two more days left. That's pretty cool. And at this time, it's different, though. Last time was a year and a half, but this time it's different because you have the whole network of support around you. Yeah, this time's completely different. I mean, this time I'm working the steps, I'm going to meetings locally, daily, I'm staying connected to the recovery house that I went through. I'm in sober living right now. So, yeah, everything's different. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming up to share your story. I'm actually going to have you um, stay up here. Alcohol, methamphetamines, heroin. There are many ways to get addicted. Fortunately, there are a number of ways to start recovery. Call the Intervention and Treatment Referral now, offered by Spencer Recovery Centers. The uh, wonderful people from Frank's House have uh, come forward to offer sponsor sponsorship to someone who really wants to get help. Um, there's a waiting list right now to get into Frank's house, but there are, um, there are private beds available, and uh, Frank's house is willing to, uh, in light of this show, give people hope and offer a treatment package to someone who really is in need. And we have someone in the audience here named Greg. Greg, you want to come up? for coming up. Uh, it's a brave thing to do, but uh, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> uh, I've been struggling with alcoholism for a long time. I had 
probably three months of sobriety and then I started taking dirty chips and I took a dirty cake. Um, and I, then I would go through the cycle of trying to stop, but my disease took me, you know, um, to the dark place where um, I was hiding it, you know, and I thought I was hiding it, and I actually, I, I did get away with it. I, when I finally came to the truths about it in, um, in December, uh, I told my sponsor, and uh, he said, well, you know, what a good liar you are. I mean, he had no idea, and um, one of my sobriety brothers, you know, was surprised. He had no idea either. I, I mean, I don't want to lie anymore, I, because it it um, has really affected me. Because um, I have, I want to be honest. I was raised to be honest, and you know, the way that I am now is, you know, is not honest, and I gotta get, I gotta get honest with myself, you know, and with everybody around me. See what this show does? Here we are, and we're talking, and we have, we've, we've talked to a lot of people, and the theme at this point is getting honest. It's an amazing thing, because you just wanting to come up here and get honest. It's not easy to get up here at all. You know, I talked to you in the back, and, and you were shaking, and you're willing to, and, and, and you had the option not to, but the whole idea is whatever you have to say up here is going to help someone, because someone might be in this position as well, and they might just say they're going to give up. So this is, this is pretty cool. What, um, tell me what's gone on in the last couple months. Well, um, I, I, I quit a job that I, you know, um, thought I couldn't handle because uh, I was, you know, drinking before I went to it. Um, I um, uh, was drinking every day and hiding it from my partner. Um, and like I said, my, you know, going to the meetings, um, I, I let the, um, the insanity you know, build up in me. Um, and the week before Christmas, um, you know, I was drinking very heavily. And on um, December 20th, I, you know, tried to end it all. And that didn't work, and I ended up in a psych hospital um, for Christmas and, um, you know, missed it with my, my family and my, my partner. Um, And I've been, I, I have, you know, uh, no way, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do, um, except I, like I said, I, I don't want to go back to the way that I was. I want to, I want to be so truthfully honest, you know, I want to, um, uh, but I had to have something that would work because I've, I've tried to do it on my own and I've tried to go to, you know, but I know I haven't done it correctly at all. I have not been honest. And um, I know that's the word I keep on using, but mm -hmm. um, I know that that's the addiction. I mean, that's my disease. You know, I can't be honest, and I and I I want to find out how to. Okay. Well, um, I spoke to the owner of Frank's house, um, Mike Rauke, and he said that you were really trying to get in. Um, there was a financial issue, and you were just trying to make it work. You were on a waiting list. Um, but the, the desire is there, and I think we all see the desire there. We've all been there before. And um, uh, we would like to offer you, on, on the behalf of Frank's house, uh, a treatment option. And really, it's the same thing. It's you, you go, and if you, if you go and you don't work it, then, then the opportunity, you know, you miss the opportunity. But if you go and you, and you work it, you stay as long as you need to stay to make it work. It's an individualized program. And, I, I mean, I, I'm thinking that next Christmas is going to be a lot better than this Christmas, and maybe that's exactly how it had to happen. And the fact that you're up here right now, again, and willing to, to uh, you know, show us these raw feelings and reach out um, is amazing. And, and I think that um, you're in for a miracle as well. So are you willing to go to treatment? I'm willing because, like you said, uh, I, want a, I want a much better Christmas. And uh, I know that there is a bigger life out there. Uh, than the small life that I created. 
you know, uh, David said about isolating, and I've never been an isolator, and that's what I've been doing, you know. So this opportunity from Frank's house is, you know, it is an answer to a prayer. Uh, and it was actually, uh, you know, today that I prayed for it, that I, you know, heard the call. I got the call, so. Yes, I'm ready to go. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Amphetamines, heroin, there are many ways to get addicted. Fortunately, there are a number of ways to start recovery. Call the Intervention and Treatment Referral now, offered by Spencer Recovery Centers. It's been a very interesting day so far. Where, um, everyone's been so wonderful and patient and supportive in the audience, and We've seen some great transformations. We've seen some miracles right here. We're going to be in store for other miracles, I think, over the next month. Uh, we have one more guest. Actually, it's two more guests. They're together um, that I'd like to have come up here. Um, these two gentlemen, it's a father and a son, who have been trying to get into treatment. The son is getting in, trying to get into treatment, and Dad is, is uh, anxiously awaiting uh, for his son to get into a program before he goes back out again. And that's a scary situation to be in, um, to, to feel like you can't get into a facility or you're trying to get into a facility and worried that a weekend's going to come along and God forbid you're going to overshoot the mark and something's going to happen. So we have, uh, we'll welcome our two guests to come up here, possible. <laughs> Hi, thank you for coming. I'm here with Joe and Jordan. So tell me what's going on. Dad, can I hear it from you first? Oh, sure. Uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been making a lot of calls and emails pretty much throughout the whole state, trying to find a place where my son could uh, get treatment. And uh, recently, he got fired from his job. He's uh, gone to jail a couple of times. And so kind of brought him to back home. And he's been, he's been with... Uh, his brothers and sister and uh, mom and me. And um, because I think like Marshall mentioned, you know, you can't let him go to the store because they're gonna disappear. And that's what happened the last time he got fired from his job. He was, he was gone maybe 10 days and we didn't know where he was. And then they would go to file a police report and they find out he's been arrested already for meth. So they kind of blow it off. And, but then part of the procedure is they call the morgue because they, to check for his tattoos. and. Stuff like that, so you know everybody knows how serious it is. And um, I, I was divorced when uh, when he was three, and I had him every weekend and every Wednesday. He's my pride and joy, you know, my my first baby boy. And uh, he just since later part of high school when he started using, he just it, he was gone, you know. The little bit of time he was there, he was too busy to talk to me. I had to talk to him in the mirror when he was doing his hair and stuff. You know? So uh, I, we were all there for him, but he wasn't there for himself. Or, or, and um, So it's, he just missed a lot of things, and it's progressively getting worse. And he really doesn't know how to live as, a, as an adult without using drugs. And um, so like I said, I've been contacting uh, places, and then it was like a miracle today because Frank's house called Bill and said that you would offer us to come down here uh, for the show, and um, because you know he don't have any insurance or anything, so that's that's where it's at. And it couldn't be a better day right now. Checking the morgue, yeah, for tattoos. Yeah, I actually when I disappeared for ten days. Um, sorry, I'm a little emotional because hearing you, Dad. Say that I missed out on so many things. It, it, it just gets to me. Sorry, but um, I worked for three years for seven doctors, and what really gets me too is five out of the seven doctors went, went out on the streets and had a search party for me, and they all had my picture, and they were all looking for me. And it just showed that even the doctors I worked for cared so much about me that they took time out of seeing patients at the hospital surgeries and all that just to go and look for me. So 
Sorry, I didn't think I was gonna no, get emotional. Okay. <laughs> and your drug of choice is meth. Crystal meth mm -hmm. seems to be the theme. Yeah. Today. You know, I go back to what your dad said about mm. uh, not taking the time when you're, you know, you're in the mirror combing yeah. your hair. <laughs> I but remember that too. And he'd be like, Jordan, you need to clean your counter. It's coated with hairspray. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But again, it's that what we were talking about before, and, and it seems to be the theme as well, is that uh, it's enjoying each other's company mm -hmm. and being like David being in his sister's life. And here your dad was here wanting to enjoy your company. Mm -hmm. It's not about the things, it's not about the degrees or anything yeah. like that. It's just about the everyday It's also everyday that things. I have um, a little brother and sister and they've been together, my stepmom and him have been together for eight years and I'm just getting to know them right now. How old are you? 24. Have you tried getting sober before? Yeah. Um, it's, I've been doing meth for six years, on and off. Um, I was arrested once, was released, and then that same day I used and two weeks later, I was arrested again, both for possession, and I was in the county jail for two weeks. So that was where I sobered up, and I came out, and I spent, I live on my own, so I had a little bit of time, but I have a lot of issues with, with uh, I don't love myself. I, like, I, I look in the mirror, and I don't like what I see. And also, um, I get really lonely. And when I get that way is when I just go out and use, because it completely numbs me. And then living on your own, you don't have to be accountable to yeah, anyone either. I, yeah. So, um, the longest period I've gone is six months. Okay. And what was that like? That was during um, the second time I was arrested. I got Prop 36, and I had to go um, to. I, w I had an outpatient where I went three days a week, mm -hmm. and they would test you on one of those days, but you wouldn't know which one. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel really comfortable being gay because they would make gay jokes and talk about, oh, you know, my girl and everything. So I really couldn't be open and honest. Just like they said before, I had to hide and sit back and just say the basics, but I couldn't really get deep and deep in, in, in us in a serious about it. And that makes sense, you know, it, it, being able to be comfortable in your surroundings mm -hmm. and, you know, keeping your mouth shut, it, that's kind of defeating the purpose of going in and treatment. I think it's a little different at Frank's house like we were talking about earlier. There's a waiting list to get in and whenever there's a waiting list or, it's, or you know, you have to either pay to get into a facility, it's, you know, there has to be some type of uh, uh, involvement on your part or effort on your part. Mm. If they're not going to, you know, make other people wait in line if you're not going to make this work for yourself. Mm. So I think on that level it's going to be a good fit for you as well. But I know your dad really wants you to get mm -hmm. into treatment. But where are you with that at this point? I say hell yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just totally, totally done with it and I want to just move forward and I've, I've lost my job, I still have my, my apartment and stuff but I know pretty soon I'm going to end up homeless and my dad's given me the ultimatum and I want to show my dad and my family that I want to I enjoy my life and move on and get to where I want to be. So I see that when he wants to do it. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. I want to ask, can anyone give any words of encouragement to either Jordan uh, or his dad? Anyone offer any words of encouragement at this point in their sobriety? And at this point in their uh, recovery process, just wanting to go into a facility? Alcohol, methamphetamines, heroin, there are many ways to get addicted. Fortunately, there are a number of ways to start recovery. Call the Intervention and Treatment Referral now, offered by Spencer Recovery Centers. Hi, my name's Tracy. Um, for me, you know, I had been in several different recovery places, and when I finally admitted complete defeat, and I finally surrendered, is when everything started to really take place for me. And, um, you know, I see that you're very willing, which is a great place for you to start, and I really have a good feeling for you guys. So at this point, um, Frank's House has also come forward uh, to offer you a scholarship program as well. And that would involve just you basically showing up there, willing to take direction, willing to do what they ask you to do, and putting your old ways aside, and uh, just going through the program, not just saying what people want, want mm -hmm. to hear. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's about being honest again, and 
dad can get involved with treatment as well and the family can get involved, it's an important part. And you can be in a, in a facility where you feel comfortable about sharing about everything. Mm -hmm. You're not holding anything aside and you're not worried about people using the facility. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? I want to thank you for the opportunity and I am willing to go and I, I'm all for it. Right on. Good job. <laughs>